Brisbane, like much of coastal Australia, has been heavily developed and cleared over the past few hundred years. One of many casualties are the trees that produce these famously delicious nuts, the macadamia. While macadamias are loved and they're now grown all over the world, this is where they're actually from. They're native to Queensland and northeastern New South Wales. But over 80% of macadamias have been lost and they're threatened in the wild. Today I'm searching the Brisbane suburbs for some specimens. Liz Gould is a scientist who specialises in conservation. She's the principal scientist at Healthy Land and Water and has been working to recover macadamia numbers. She's taking me for a walk in some remnant bushland to find a few of these wonderful trees growing wild. Macadamia integrifolia, what we're looking for today, naturally grows in rainforests in southeast Queensland. It grows in our drier rainforests, the scrubby kind of things on fairly harsh country because they're really quite resilient species and then they also grow in those more lush subtropical rainforests that people typically think of when you talk about rainforests often along our creek systems and, and in this part of the world those rainforests are uh, there's a lot less of them than there once were which is why the habitat for macadamias is threatened and the species is. Now this is a, a member of the Proteaceae family so it's a relative of Grevilleas and Banksias and I have to say, I've never seen a wild one with leaves this far down to the ground. Normally they're straight up and into the canopy. Well, that's because in wild situations they've got to compete with so many other rainforest trees. So they're going up for those little gaps in the light. This one might have branched down low because we've got a little bit of sunlight coming in through here. And it's that exposure to sunlight that encourages them to produce flowers. We get the pollinators then can visit those flowers and create the beautiful nuts that, that we all appreciate. There's a nut. Oh, and this one's been eaten by a rat. And that doesn't help with this being an endangered species or a vulnerable species, Integrifolia. We don't get much recruitment. So if you look on the ground here, we haven't got any small trees coming up underneath this one. Um, so we really rely on these trees to just hang in there, wait for a break in the canopy, a good flowering season, hopefully some of the nuts will make it to young, and then we'll see recruitment in the population build. But they need a bit of our help to do that. Macadamias were valued by our First Nations people, obviously, for tens of thousands of years before European arrival. We used to trade it up and down the East Coast and traded it with the early settlers when they first arrived as well. There's an interesting history to Australia's commercial cultivation of macadamias, but first, we'll need to venture out of the bush and into two of Brisbane's botanic gardens. In 1858, trials began of commercial macadamia cultivation. A 160-year-old tree in the Brisbane City Botanic Garden is believed to be the first macadamia tree planted by a settler. It now reaches over 17 metres tall and is on the National Trust listing as a significant tree. But early macadamia plantations were plagued with pests, disease and fires. And so for the first hundred years or so, the industry failed to launch. However, in the 19th century, a few specimens were taken from Queensland to Hawaii and a commercial macadamia industry boomed there instead. In fact, bizarrely, it's these cultivars which were developed in Hawaii that are now planted in commercial macadamia farms all around the world, including back here in Australia. But it's the original wild species in Australia that we're most interested in today. Liz and I are heading to the Mount Coother Botanic Garden to look at a special collection that was gifted by the Macadamia Conservation Trust. One of the most special of these is Macadamia jansenii which is the species that's listed as endangered in the wild under legislation. So how many of those are there? Well, when it was listed, it only thought 60, but they're still in a really narrow location. So they're really under potential risk and threat from things like wildfire that could take out the whole population. So we're heading to Macadamia turnifolia. This occurs north from Pine Rivers through to up near Gympie probably the first one that was tasted by white settlers who went 
it's poisonous, we can't eat that, and didn't discover the delicious integrifolia and tetrafilla for many years. Macadamia ternifolia, like the other species, is threatened in the wild. So we're wanting people to tell us where they've found macadamias within the bushland, but also if they're in their backyard. Once people tell us about their trees, we'll send them out a little macadamia collection kit. They can collect a leaf sample for us and send it off to the universities that we work with, Southern Cross University and the University of Queensland, and they'll tell us how related this tree is to all the other macadamias we know about, which is really important for conservation, but also important for capturing the genetics for maybe future development within the industry. Research has found that all the macadamias growing on farms around the world originally came from a handful of Queensland macadamias, and this means they're genetically vulnerable. So if you've got an old macadamia in your backyard, get outside and take a sample. <laughs>